This is iHeart Communities. I'm your host, Jade Harrell, keeping you connected to our community. It is a great opportunity for us here to experience in February a very powerful event, incredible film, independent film with the 11th annual Africa World Documentary Film Festival. And with documentaries, we go into depth. We go into places that we don't see on the surface media and have an opportunity to hear stories directly from people who live it. Who live it. Who live it. I am joined today by Dr. Niyi Coker. And I am so grateful to have you. You are the founder of this festival. Yes, it started 11 years ago when I first uh, moved out here to St. Louis. Well, what a big idea you brought yeah. here. How did you, what, what inspired you? Well, it's a very funny story, the inspiration. Um, about 11, 12 years ago, one of my early documentaries got accepted at the Hollywood Black Film Festival oh. in Los Angeles. What and you I had- wrote and shot? Yes, it's called Black Studies USA. Okay. And it's a documentary about the history of black studies in America. Nice. Um, I was kind of looking at the 60s, and I didn't want a lot of students to forget how this discipline came to be, you know. So, mm-hmm. I, you know, it's a, it's a good documentary that gives you enlightenment and, and understanding that a lot of people made sacrifices for the creation of black studies at universities. Yes. And so we, it was accepted in Hollywood film, Black Film Festival, and, um, well, I got there, lo and behold, um, we found out that they only shoot documentaries in the morning, and at <laughs> night they shoot feature films. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So, uh, um, not much exposure. Yeah, not much exposure. And the idea was, well, listen, this is Hollywood. When people want to see more feature films, they, documentaries, they could see that in the morning after lunch or mm-hmm. something. And um, so um, so a lot of us documentary filmmakers felt, you know, we've been marginalized and mm-hmm. um, we were doing good work in terms of, you know, documentary storytelling. And um, I just said to myself, you know, um, I and a couple of others decided wherever we landed or wherever we went, we would make sure that if we could take on documentary films as a genuine art form um, and, uh, you know, its veracity and put it up there for everybody to be able to see the story Uh center and not, you know, as an object or, you know. Um, So this is how, you know, when I got here, um, I decided, hey, you know what? Um, There's a lot of documentary filmmakers around the world who are telling the story of African people. African people in India, African people in Pakistan, African people in Australia, African people in China, in Africa, in the USA, in Europe. And all these stories are lost. Yes. A lot of people don't get to even see the stories at all. Right, right. Why is that? so, so basically, that was the idea because mm-hmm. not everybody can, you know, afford to buy a plane ticket to Australia or Papua New Guinea That's right. to go experience African culture in those places. But we have these documentary films that talk about all these experiences and culture and contribution that Africans have made all over the world. Yes. Uh, you know, which is just, it's mind-blowing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so um, this is what we do. So... Annually, every year, you know, we get these documentaries from all these filmmakers from all over the world who are telling the African story. Wow. And it's, it's I, I mean, I never stop learning myself from this documentary. Exactly. Not only learning, but man, think of the tremendous gains that have occurred in order for that to even be possible. You know, so I, I, I one want to congratulate you on your film making it to that film festival, the Hollywood Film Festival. You know, they consider that that's the big stage. Yes, it's a big stage. You know, but it's such a big stage. You all felt small. Yeah, it's in the morning after lunch. (laughs) (laughs) Right, right. You know, um, and and with that, that you made a commitment to not only share, but Mm. to keep at it. So I I do want to kind of pick you a little bit about what it took for you to say, hey, not only am I going to learn this story, I'm going to share this story, like with your film, because I think this is something that the other documentary filmmakers share with you. Yes. How did you step forward and and actually have your idea and create your idea and bring it to life, that you decided, hey, I'm going to go beyond just learning and knowing for myself? You mean for my own documentary? Yes, absolutely, absolutely. The things with documentary filmmaking, it's like you you come across a set of facts, Mm -hmm. 
And this fact becomes so unbearable oh. that, you know, it, sometimes knowledge can be a terrible burden, really. Yes, sir. Um, and one of, uh, and I'll give you an example, not just, you know, Black Studies USA. My last documentary, which is titled Otabenga, mm-hmm. um, you know, which won the first prize at the London International Film Festival. Bravo! Yeah, actually, opened it, it, I opened it here in St. Louis. Bravo. But it's a story that I stumbled on when I moved to St. Louis. I used to teach at the University of Alabama in Birmingham mm-hmm. before I came up to St. Louis, to Omsol. And um, when I got up here, I, you know, started, I went to the Missouri History Museum, Yes, one of the great places to go to. And I got there and I saw this exhibit mm-hmm. about um, the St. Louis Walls Fair. How many people know that the St. Louis Walls Fair in 1905, um, mm-hmm. which were terrible racial times for people of African descent, yes. and even, even here in Missouri, that Africans were actually brought from Africa to St. Louis? Oh. They were shipped in, even though enslavement, slavery was over. A guy named McGee was paid money to go to Africa. McGee paid a guy money to go to Africa to go ship in, buy black people, and bring him to the St. Louis Walls Fair. I did not. I, yeah, I, I, many Geronimo. Of us did not. Yes. yes, Geronimo and Native Americans were at that Walls Fair, and these Africans were brought in to shoot arrows with Native Americans to run on trees, climb trees, to run in the mud. This was the kind of sport that the Africans and Native Americans were subject to doing. Mm-hmm. And at the end of the World's Fair, one of the Africans named Otto Benga mm-hmm. was sold to the Bronx Zoo, mm-hmm. where he was exhibited with orangutan, baboons and monkeys and, you know. So wow. I discovered this here in St. Louis. Yes. And it was one of those things where you uncover so much and you decide, you know, this is a documentary. Mm-hmm. People have to see the story. Yeah, they do. People have to understand the story that, you know, not only was racism occurring in the USA in terms of the, you know, just after the Civil War and the Jim Crow and segregation, but science. 1904. 1904, wow. 1905. Darwin's theory of evolution had, was being used and applied, you know, scientifically applied or misapplied mm-hmm. to show the inferiority or come to this, you know, botched evidence of inferiority of black people. Mm. And this was at a time when Congress was still trying to understand which way to go with congressional decisions as pertaining to African people in America who'd just been emancipated. Mm -hmm. And then on the one hand, you have the scientific experiment Mm -hmm. going on at the Bronx Zoo in New York. And the New York Times covered this. So this is not something that, you know, uh, people should just Google it, Otabenga. And they'd be mm-hmm. really surprised that, you know, side by side was this devious experiment. I mean, almost diabolical, really. Yeah. You know, in terms of denigrating the image and the, you know, and the sanctity of black people. Mm-hmm. Now, as an instructor, yeah. as an educator, yeah. how should how can this knowledge be beneficial and applied? Knowing this, because I, I feel like there is a morale and a self-concept that's already degenerated. Yes. Knowing this, I think instructors have to, and this is instructors of all, of all I mean, um, races. Mm-hmm. Is this uh, where we need persuasion? curation? Yes. We need a curator? Yes. Uh, instructors have to open up the curriculum. Got you got to go into the curriculum and stop teaching, you know, or misteaching. Um, the wrong things in the curriculum mm-hmm. or teaching people or children that, you know, somebody named Columbus discovered America and that there, were, there was no presence of other people in America before Columbus came. <laughs> it was some because you, you need to go back again and look at a guy like Ivan Van Sertima and the New York Times. I keep saying the New York Times because this is accepted by even, you know, the white establishment. Sure, sure. Even the New York Times ac- acknowledges that Ivan Van Sertima's book which is called They Came Before Columbus, actually chronicles accurately the African presence in America uh-huh. way before Columbus. Uh-huh. <laughs> and that the Africans had a presence in America and in South America and had been trading with the, uh, 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 with the vision of a mariner prince called Sunni Ali Burr, who had sailed 
you know, with soldiers and fortune from West Africa all the way to the Americas. Wow. And was going back and forth at the time. Already. Already. That's huge. That yeah, would be huge yeah. to include, especially as you mentioned before in our earlier conversation, for young people yeah. understanding who they are and yeah. from where they come. Precisely. Wow. I, can you imagine what that would do in the curriculum for young children? Mm-hmm. I can tell you what it does for me as a yeah. grown up woman. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, what it would do for young children to understand in the curriculum. That, yes, you know, we're not just studying something that's unrelated to us, but something that's factual, that talks about our own heritage and who we are. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Who we are collectively as Americans, as people, because I think we would with a different narrative, we would conduct ourselves much different. Oh, much, much differently. Much differently. Well, unlike yourself, as you said, once you discover certain information, you want to do a documentary. Not all of us have the gifting that you may have had. To create that, but this is where we become the beneficiaries. Yeah. You went to many, you went through many, many years and courses of study to discover yeah. and learn what you have. But the gift for us is that with your documentary and others that are part of this film festival, yeah. we get that knowledge all put Precisely. together and presented in a way that can not only save us time but yeah. save us perspective. Perspective, and this become resources. Yes, this become resources which. I mean, because once we show these documentaries, we don't just cut them away and go lock them up. No. Uh, we, we make them available for teachers, for students, for anybody who wants to oh, you know, share it with their own communities. To now, say, that's hey, different. Yes. Well, I see you don't hear that every day. Yeah. Uh, and I think that's something unique to what you are doing with your film festival in, in particular. But not only that, what it can do as it troubled your spirit, it will trouble others. And then we can join in yeah. and, and have have a part of this conversation and spread the knowledge more so for uh, not only our children, but share the stories for everyone we encounter. Hopefully. Well, Hopefully. we can definitely do something about that miseducation you spoke about. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So you have been doing this for 11 years. It's, it's still going strong. It's going strong. And it's, it's and the Documentary Film Festival is not just here in the USA, uh, uh, here in St. Louis. We actually take the same Documentary Film Festivals. We have, uh, we go to Ghana, University of Ghana in Legon. We're on the three campuses of the University of West Indies oh, in yes. Barbados, yes. in Jamaica, in Trinidad. Uh, we are the IRF Film Festival in Lagos, Nigeria. We are the Mollificate Afrocentric Institute in Philadelphia. We are Stellenbosch University in South Africa. Uh, we are the I Will Tell Film Festival in England, which is uh, actually tied to um, the Notting Hill, the Black Festival in England. Is that right. So, so, so basically, the st- this stories go around the world they to do. all the African communities. Well, um, then we would be remiss to let that opportunity pass us by. So, for us, uh, here we are. What's different from uh, year one to now year eleven? What's different? It, the, the, Things have gotten better. Okay. They've gotten stronger. The submissions um, in terms of the competition, because usually we get about 400 films submitted wow. to the festival. We only select 50 mm-hmm. because we can't curate 400. That's a lot. That is. Um, when well, we bravo pro- that there's that many to come that, forward. There exactly. are folks that have put their craft, their art, their discipline to the story. To the story. Yeah. When we started, we only got about 80. Look at that. 80 themes or 50 themes or 60 themes. But right now it's 400, 450. Yeah. And yeah. so the things, all the filmmakers, the filmmakers tell one another, listen, when you get to tell your story, there's a documentary film festival in St. Louis called the Africa World Documentary Film Festival. They don't just show in St. Louis. Your films will get shown in That's South right. Africa. That's they will right. get seen in the Caribbean. They will get seen in West That's Africa. Serious. They will get seen in Europe. So um, with this network of other universities where the, your films get to show, as a result, we become really popular because yes. a lot of filmmakers realize, listen, this is the population I'm trying to attract mm-hmm. to get to see my work. Mm-hmm. Um, and so as a result, um, we get this wonderful, wonderful themes um, coming through the door um, and, you know, very, very topical subjects. Um, we have the honest struggle this year. The honest struggle, um, which comes out of Chicago, um, is the story of a brother who's been in prison three times. He's 
he's done his three strikes. Uh oh. But he but he is able to get out and try and reinvent his life. Yes. He's been incarcerated three times. He's fifty five years old. Look at that. Oh, eventually, we need that story. Woo Yes. Eventually he becomes a Muslim. He you know, he joins the nation of Islam and he begins to turn his life around. Basically and um I won't give you the rest of the story. I know, story. right? No spoilers. No, 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 spoilers. no spoilers. But it's a great story. It's, a, it's inspirational. It's very yeah. inspirational. Yeah. yeah. Um, That's another part of uh, why I really want to encourage our listeners to get out and experience these on the big screen yeah. and with the energy of um, like-minded people who want to learn and grow by being exposed to this information. Wow. Yeah. What's another one of your favorites? I, I, another one that's coming in is um, on uh, on Saturday night we have Frozen My Clothes mm-hmm. which is about uh, yes. the great DJ in Chicago Herb the Cool Ken Gent honoring her, her. honoring Herb the yes, yes. Uh-huh. and he's in the Radio Hall of Fame and of course as you know we have um, the legendary St. Louis DJ um, DJ G Wiz D- yes G-Wiz. both of them of yeah. whom I, I truly admire and I feel that have, well G Wiz and I are, are, are good friends oh, um, but I was a fan for First, <laughs> well, then you'll be there too. So Absolutely. you'll be you'll be you'll be doing the Q and A, and you know, talking to, you know, getting feedback from people who've come to see Absolutely. that documentary. Absolutely. Um, yeah, we we also have. On Sunday, we have one called Hyphenation. Tell me about that one. Uh, it's about five women who are Canadian, mm-hmm. who Africa, Afro-Canadians. Really? Yes. And they're actually wrestling with the notion of what it is to be, what is Afro-Canadian? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And where does our own Africanity come in as black women first? Yeah. Within the Canadian, you know, within the Canadian cultural context. Mm-hmm. You know, um, yes, it's good to say we're Canadian, but, you know, we want to identify as black women who have a, you know, a different set of struggles. Yeah. Other than, you know, so that that's pretty powerful because it's young yeah. girls. Oh, is it's, it? Yes, it's young girls, um, you know, mostly college girls who are wrestling with this identity of being black mm-hmm. women um, within the Canadian context. Wow. You uh, know, something about that that really intrigues me. And then when I think about uh, you uh, were born in Nigeria, you yeah. came to America, you studied African studies yeah. and African-American studies, and yeah. now you're a part of this incredible film festival. So you've seen multiple conversations and perspectives. Yes. Is there a collective um, like these sisters, they want to identify their black woman mm-hmm. uh, yes. identity. Is there a collective identity among us, other than the one that's kind of been placed on us in a negative light, would you say? There's a collective thing which is a understanding our humanity. That, you know, um, that, that no matter where we come from, that's the one thing I find in all this documentary. That unifies us? That unifies us. What that is no that? matter where we yes. come from in terms of, um, I, I, and the strange thing is I actually got that from a documentary out of India. Okay. Tell There's a documentary out of Hyderabad, India, which we showed about three years ago, um, which, is, um, which is actually, um, which is this Indians who've been in India for over 500 years, they speak the language, they, the only thing when you look at them is that they're African people, I mean, from their hair to their looks to their body, oh. and they actually would tell you that their own ancestors came all the way from East Africa, five, six hundred <laughs> years ago, and still to India. Wow. And, um, and it's in this documentary that they talk about the fact that even though they're removed from the African continent, yes, they're removed from African people. They haven't been around a lot of African people. They consider that humanity has been African very sacrosanct. Yes. And they don't compromise on that, even though they don't speak any other languages but Hindi. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and wow. it makes them reach out to other Africans to say, when they you know, see other Africans in India, to say, yes, we in India, but we're Africans first. Mm-hmm. We're Africans first. You know, That's, I think that would be the the collective that I feel yeah. is that we are. There's nothing that can separate us from that idea yeah. that we're Africans first. Yeah. No matter what negative stigma, whatever yeah. um, 
uh, classifications or yeah. or dismantling of or, or, us or, or shit, or, or, excuse me, or shitholism. Uh, ha, ha, right? <laughs> yes, <laughs> sir. <I'm really> <laughs> yes, sir. There is still that unite unifying idea that we are Africans. Yes. 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 And I would love to see that be solidified and nurtured. Yes. And developed into yeah. something that can yeah. really be uh, transformative yeah. worldwide. Yeah. Oh, wow, that's powerful. Yeah. And we all say that the one thing, the one major great thing, which, you know, um, our previous, our last president was certainly going to go down as one of the greatest presidents in American history, mm-hmm. Barack Obama. One of the greatest things that he contributed without even really knowing it when you read his biography is that he maintained his name. Oh, sure. He didn't have to change his name. Yeah. Yeah. Um, as a young man, yeah, he was confused about his name, and he was, you know, wanted people to call him Barry. But as an older person and as he matured, um, and though he was running for political office, he didn't anglicize his name. He didn't, okay. you know, make his name palatable or agreeable. He maintained that identity of being Barack Hussein Obama. Yeah. Um, so and that, that may have been a stand he made for himself, but it was a stand for us. For Russ and for uh-huh, Pete uh-huh. to understand that, you know, wow. um, you know, because what happens within our cultural context is even though some parents can explain it, there's a reason why parents in the African-American context yeah. give their children names Special. that sound probably African, but aren't African, but they make them, you know, um, and, and people tend to say, well, how did they make up that name? Mm-hmm. Why is that name really unique? It's not in Very the Western unique. lexicon yeah. of names. Yeah. But it's a name that says and affirms you are somebody. You mm-hmm. are, you know, appreciated and you have a unique name because your name is who you are. Yeah, you are uniquely somebody. Somebody. You are uniquely somebody. Now, there's some counter arguments that yeah. Barack Obama yeah. did not fight for or do enough for Africans and African Americans that they felt that one narrative is that he did more for uh, every other protected class you know he he fought for LGBT rights he fought for women's rights he fought for um, immigrant rights but he they did not feel that he did so for Africans and African Americans what would be your your thought or response to that I I think he did, mm-hmm. and um, I, I think his sheer presence in being there was strong enough to show that he did. It did. Um, yes, I, I, I would yeah. make that argument. Um, I would say that the expectation from several quarters <laughs> was that because he was an African American president, he mm-hmm. people expected him to forget that he was president of the entire United States sure. and. Sure. Um, um, and or forget about, you know, uh, he he did some things in Africa. I mean, yes, I I know the argument, and I know mm-hmm. yes that George W. Bush actually did a lot more on the continent of Africa, mm-hmm. ironically, than um, Barack Obama did in terms of you know foreign policy mm-hmm. and. Um, putting out resources onto the continent. <laughs> yeah, but we know about some people's agendas at this yes. point. <laughs> yeah. But so, not to politicize the, the conversation. I yeah, just wanted to so, get your sure, your input sure. on that. And I think yeah, that was I, a, a, I think that's a great narrative. I, I hear that. that but, because people did expect him to be the, the be all end all savior sure. to yeah. every ill that ever was yeah. because well, he became this person. President. Mm-hmm. But then if you look at it too, he had an attorney general who was a very strong, powerful man mm-hmm. who was not afraid to address race and who, of course, True that. would you know would talk to the president to say, look, we have to get this done. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I, we've never seen an attorney general like that before. Indeed. And I don't think we're going to see one like that after. Don't say um, it. No, we need well, more. I, the way things are going, you know. Um, yeah. Do you think that the African people, African-American people um, will retreat? No. Will regress. No. Okay. Um, you know, there's with if you look if you look at the history of African African American people. Yeah. I don't know, and I I don't want to you know put on a scale what kind of evil have been done to people around the world, mm-hmm. but no people have taken on as much um, 
onslaught yeah. to their personality, to their humanity as African-American people or African people. Yeah. And if the evils and the oppressive forces of enslavement and Jim Crowism and lynchings could not make these people regress. Yes. I think, you know, and I used to say this in Alabama. There were days in Alabama, I was chair of the Black Studies Department. Mm -hmm. And I, it was the first Black Studies Department in a place like Birmingham, Civil oh, Rights City. Yeah, yeah. And I, I faced a lot of opposition, daily. Mm -hmm. A lot of opposition, mm -hmm. you know. But the one thing that kept me going was some days I would run into people who marched with Dr. King. Wow. People who were foot soldiers in the struggle in Birmingham, in Montgomery, in Selma. And they would tell me their own horrendous stories. Mm -hmm. And I'd say, you know, just say to myself, if this humble people mm -hmm. went through that much obstacle, then what am I complaining about? Wow, well, yeah. You know, I just, I just got to just deal with... You know, I just got to start on the shoulders and, you know, uh -huh. of the path they've created for me to be here. Otherwise, I wouldn't really be here, right? Yeah. You know, yeah. because they've, they've made it possible for me to be in this situation, you know, at this university, you know, where there was segregation, you know, barely 50 years ago. Mm -hmm. And here I am now in within the same context of that same university fighting to create opportunities for mm -hmm. black students, black faculty, but then the big fight with the fire hoses and the dogs and the yes. courthouses and the jail cells, they've gone through all that. Yes. The bombings, they've dealt with all that. And so who am I to complain? Mm -hmm. So based on that alone, wow. I'm really convinced that, you know, there's going to be a strong resurgence of people of African descent. Not just, it's, it's happening here in the USA, it's happening in Brazil, it's happening in the Caribbean, it's happening in Europe. Mm -hmm. There's this strong resurgence of people of African descent who are beginning to reaffirm their humanity. So it's a global thing. It's a serious global thing. And um, no, I don't see a re I don't see a regression. No, I don't. Okay. Well, no, that is no. the good news. And most yes. certainly you have a way to share and tell about it. And I certainly appreciate your contribution here. Thank I got you. one more side question. Sure. Yeah. So you were a professor there in Alabama. Yes, I was. I was a professor so in Alabama. I'm sure you were on on edge about mm -hmm. this most recent uh, um, gover <laughs> gubernatorial election. Yes. What are your thoughts about what happened in Alabama? Victory. <laughs> it, it, and the funny thing was, I, I watched. I was watching from TV, and and I was actually texting several people on that stage. <laughs> it was super and several Bowl people on the floor, and um, you know, it was a sense of finally, yeah. um, people are waking up because the sense in Alabama, if you leave there, it's just a deep red state, and a lot of the blues are around Birmingham or Mobile or Huntsville where you have the universities and people really out there don't really go out to vote uh -huh. because they, know, they go oh no listen I mean people who you know um, people who are Democrats don't really they don't really care about voting a lot when it comes to because they know they're going to be overwhelmed by you know by the, the the conservatives and feel like oh no what's the point anyway in going to vote right mm -hmm. I mean we're not we don't really have those numbers here so you know but the situation down there with what had happened with Roy Moore and it galvanized a lot of people it galvanized people and um, a lot of students a lot of workers people stood up and said you know finally no no enough yeah. Yeah. And um, I, I think that wave is going to carry through yeah. within the next elections. I I really think so. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, because a lot of people of African descent. Of, yeah, when um, you look at the demographic turnout yeah. and what actually sealed that deal. Yes. <laughs> yeah. We are, which speaks to your very point about a resurgence and mm -hmm. a rising yeah. of a a new and stronger and more uh, more optimistic and powerful people and I absolutely love it. 
Yes. Yeah. Yes. Well, then let's get that invitation out. First of all, thank you for including the tribute to one of my predecess- predecessor predecessors, Herb the Cool Gent Kent. Oh wow! With, uh, Great. Making it very a uh, very special extra event on yes. Saturday evening that I just want to make sure everybody knows. Uh, this airs on Saturday, so Saturday. that everybody knows to come out tonight to yes. the Missouri History Museum for a great film and a great time yes. and some great music. Yeah. In uh, celebration of DJ the Cool Jet Kit, DJ yes. Herb. February and, 10th. Yes, that will be, uh, oh, February 10th. That's not yes. Saturday. It, it, I'm yeah. sorry, Sugar. That, yeah. That's right. On February 10th, look, I'm thinking we got to do it this weekend. Oh, no. I'm February like, I'm ready, 10th. my friend. I'm yeah. ready. <laughs> we start February 9th. We go into February 10th and 11th. And there's a good one there for mothers. It's called Mother's Fears. And it deals with um, mothers who have. Black Sons. Oh, wow. In Mother's this, Fears. Is that Mother's one out of... Uh, who, who who created that one? Sharon Williams out of California. Out of California, yes. Yeah, and okay. it, it's talking about, you know, in this day and age with the police brutality, mm-hmm. um, what are Mother's Fears for their sons? Yeah. 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 So yeah. what do you recommend for a newcomer to this kind of festival, film festival? So how... there? You said there's 50 films. There's no way we're going to see... Mm-hmm. Off, all, all fifty. Oh no, most of them are most of them. Most of them are very short. They're short. Okay, so then, yeah. what, what is the strategy? Like, what would you? How would you coach us if this is a first time for us? I would say just come on, um, come on in, um, sit down, and um, get ready to take. You know, you don't have to come with a passport for travel. <laughs> get ready seriously to travel on screen to different parts of the African world. Yeah. And watch the contributions and the struggle of people of African descent in different parts of the African world. We have um, documentaries coming from South Africa, the good ones, about young black girls in South Africa who are trying to make their way through high school to get education so they could help their families. We have Grind, which basically deals with a Liberian student from Liberia who joins a gang in Newark, New Jersey and um, realizes that, you know, he's got to get his act together in the USA. We have Afia attacks about the Biafra Civil War and the women's struggle in the Biafra Civil War. Um, we have the honest struggle. We had Green at War Prize. Um, we have the Horning, which deals with um, forestation in South Africa. And uh, oh, yeah. Black Lives. We have Green and Yellow, which deals with uh, homeless people in Trinidad and Tobago. Yes. Um, we have um, Skin which deals with, you know, basically skin color in Brazil. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have Fresh Start, which deals with uh, the life of uh, Somali women who've just moved to the USA mm-hmm. and want to go, you know, spend their lives farming. We have Little Feel, which deals with um, a Mozambican appeal to stop the wars in Mozambique. Uh, we have Little Rebel, which deals with uh, a lawyer who moves to the Seattle area from the country um, um, Gambia mm-hmm. and now tries to make her life in Seattle and is, you know, basically fighting against this whole thing about um, uh, not allowing refugees to stay in the USA. Yes. Um, yes, so, yes. So, so it's a whole bevy of documentaries from the African world. So just, just come on in and just come and really appreciate the African contribution, the African struggle yes. of people of African descent and, um, you know, and get into discussions at the end of them. That's right. And so we want to not only appreciate and to become aware, but to mm-hmm. absorb. Yeah. There are post-film discussions with filmmakers and experts yeah. in certain subject areas. 24 films from 16 countries. Yeah. The 11th annual Africa World Documentary Film Festival starting February 9th. That's a yeah. Friday yeah. through Sunday, February 11th. Block out your calendar, get comfortable, and get in deep to your African and African-American 
heritage, culture, contribution, and struggle. We appreciate you so much, Dr. Thank Coker, you. for Thank creating so this, much, offering, you. and sharing it right here in St. Louis. You are truly a treasure for us. Thank you. I, I'm blessed to be in St. Louis. And, um, and most of all, this is free. This this program is free. It is so free. You don't have to pay anything. I need to add that. It is free. You don't have to pay a thing. So you might have to pay you know, upwards to $25 for the Black Panther movie by Marvel. Oh, but yeah. this will be great to get yeah. you in gear and in the right mindset so it'll ma- more than make up for it. <laughs> yes, for sure, yeah. <laughs> That's right. Uh, you can check out all of the films. They'll be shown at the Missouri History Museum, one of my favorite venues. And don't forget to hang out with us on Saturday, February 10th from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. with DJ G Wiz, me, Dr. Coker, and the screening of Froze in My Clothes. Yeah, oh, and the director's coming as well. And the director will be there. Isaiah Pittman is there. He's a he's an MD. He's a doctor. He's a PhD in in medicine, and um, he he really wanted to do this. So he's going to be there too from Chicago. I am absolutely thrilled and can't wait to see you guys there. Uh, for more information, visit the um, visit Africa World Documentary Film Festival on Facebook. There's a Facebook page there, yeah, yeah. or just go to Africa World Film Festival dot com. The yeah. Phone number is 314-516-4852. Again, 314-516-4852. Dr. Yeah. Niyi Coker, thank you so very much. Oh, thank you so, so, so <laughs> much. I mean, I'm really, really honored to be, you know, speaking with you. And I sincerely look forward to seeing you at the event. And thank you so much for getting the word out and for all the wonderful things you do on radio. Uh, it is my true pleasure. All right, that's it for this week. If you have questions or comments or have something you'd like to include in the community calendar, you can leave a message on our message box at 314-333-8369, 314-333-8369. And for more information about our show or any of our guests, you can visit us online and listen to the podcast at Spreaker.com. That's S-P-R-E-A-K-E-R.com. Just search I Heart Communities with Jade Harrell. You all be blessed, do blessed, and take care.